services whereby we'll be sharing knowledge. My name is CPA Kuro Mangano from the Open University of Tanzania. Uh, I am an assistant lecturer, banking and finance. And today we are going to look at uh, principles of account from a course called OAF 101. I've decided to come up with this series of classes to enhance an understanding. And uh, the intention here is to make my students understand the knowledge behind finance, accounting, the basics of bookkeeping and aspects of finance in itself. So today we're going to look at bookkeeping. Uh, we're going to see the meaning of bookkeeping, accounting, seeing the difference uh, between the accounting and bookkeeping, and who are the users of accounting information. So. Accounting, it is the process. It is the process of identifying measuring and communicating the economic information to various users of accounting. And uh, so this information that is communicated to these different users or stakeholders is mainly intended to make them be able to uh, make different decisions. The activities involved in the process, the process of accounting, including the identifying, recording, uh, summarizing, and interpreting this information so that they can be communicated to different users. The users are going to use this information for decision making. see what bookkeeping means. Uh, bookkeeping is part of accounting. Uh, you cannot separate bookkeeping and accounting. Bookkeeping is that part of accounting that is merely concerned with the recording, the record keeping of accounting details. You see the nature of bookkeeper's work is critical and uh, with the use and, uh, and imaging of technology now it has been simplified more. Uh, that's why we have machines like POS machines that also helps uh, to simplify the work of a uh, bookkeeper. When you want to spot the difference between uh, bookkeeping and accounting or bookkeeper and accountant, there are areas or elements that you may look at and uh, which might give you a, a clue to uh, differentiate between this, th these two. One, if you look at the scope, the scope uh, accounting has much or bigger scope compared to bookkeeping. But again, if you look to the knowledge level, bookkeeper is supposed to have compared with the knowledge that an accountant is supposed to have. That's why we see today we have people who are acquiring more knowledge, the CPA, and CPA by means being a certified public accountant. But we expect, merely we expect a bookkeeper uh, is someone with the knowledge at a certificate or diploma level compared to an accountant of whom we think uh, these individuals are supposed to have a higher more level of education uh, be it a degree a master or somehow like i said a cpa but again the level of supervision uh, we are expecting accountant are the ones who are going to supervise the bookkeeper but the nature of the work as we said it as, as we said it earlier uh, nature of a work the nature of a work of a bookkeeper is more of critical work but an accountant is going to analyze it. an accountant is going to pick and take take it to where a bookkeeper has finished. That point where a bookkeeper ends up his work is the same point where an accountant starts doing his work. From the definition of accounting, we've seen that uh, the economic information has to be communicated to different users. Now the question is, who are these users of financial? accounting or who are these users of financial information now we're saying mm, this financial or economic activities needs to be communicated to different stakeholders now we need to identify a number of stakeholders and what actually what information they need out of the financials so these are uh, uh, these stakeholders include the lenders or creditors include the bank it also includes suppliers it also include um, employees the management in itself uh, owners or investors of a, of a business. So each individual here has specific inf information that needs out of the financial information. Now to start with, for example, the lenders or creditors, you see? So the lenders or creditors need to assess the credibility of a borrower. So they need information out of the financial statements. They are going to look at the creditworthiness of your company. 
the employees use this financial information to check the profitability or stability of the employers. All suppliers need this information to access if their customers can afford to pay the obligation on time. But also, the owner, the owner needs information to assess the prospect of the investment. So these principles include the duality principle, matching principle, accrual principle, reality principle, consistency, historical, prudence. So each one of these principles has a meaning. For example, the duality principle whereby it explains for any debit entry in a transaction there is a corresponding credit entry. An entry accounting should be reflected in, in two ways uh, whereby uh, there is a correspondence between a debit and a credit. A transaction that is supposed to be debited, uh, there is a corresponding entry into credit. But again, the matching principles that require someone to match or an accountant to match, the revenue should be matched, uh, revenue should be matched with expenses. Also, there are cross principles. The materiality is a principle. Uh, this principle directs an accountant to, uh, to record only those transactions that have a material in nature. And of course, materiality is very subjective. It depends with the nature of a transaction, again, scope. Uh, it also depends with the nature of a business and how big the company or an organization it is. As I said, it's very, very subjective uh, because it depends with uh, nature and how big or small an organization. Uh, by nature, we mean the nature and volume of the transaction. So, for example, here in Intrara, you cannot compare a transaction that uh, Dangote a Dangote company, the cement company is doing with some other individual small company. So a material thing, for example, buying a phone like this of uh, probably 500 uh, might be very immaterial to Dangote, but might uh, but this one will be very material to a company that is, has a small capital. Also historical cost concept, uh, it is also a principle that requires uh, recording or uh, identifying of these uh, transaction into historical cost that you identify or you record that transaction based on the uh, principal historical cost. Uh, now, let us look at the basic assumptions uh, govern the accounting. Uh, so we call these uh, assumptions to, uh, so we call this basic assumption of accounting. We have a number of basic accounting assumptions. These include the business entity, money measurement, going concern, and accounting period. Now, to start with the uh, going concern concept, uh, okay. this is saying that a business uh, will continue into exi existence for the foreseeable future period of time, uh, which means, for example, which means for a period more than twelve months, for a period beyond one year. So, actually, this tells that uh, when preparing an account, we will assume that the company in operation will continue into operating for a period more than 12 months. The accounting period, uh, it tells that uh, in recording business transaction, we will have uh, a period, and actually it is a period uh, with, uh, it, and actually it is a 12 month period. So, uh, so this assumption, it, so this assumes that in preparing financial record, we'll have a record, record of 12 months. Also, you know, when you look at the going costs, uh, when you look at the money measurement principles, this actually tells we are, we, are, we are only going to record those transactions in monetary terms. Transactions that do not relate in monetary terms, we are not going to, uh, to record them. For example, you might be having a good leader or in an organization having a director might, have, uh, might be having a very good director uh, who actually influenced the performance of that organization. But actually, that, uh, that part of it, it is not going to be recorded in the financial statement, for example, in the performance a statement, for, a statement of financial performance, the income statement. Uh, we are not going to record that part because that is not money related. So only those transactions which relate to money or those transactions which, which have the money impact, they're the ones which we are going to, 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 to record. And again, the business entity, uh, this concept, uh, uh, this assumption, uh, require that you're supposed to separate those activities of the owners and those activities of the company. Activities of the company should remain to be activities of a company and those activities of the owner should remain to be activities of the owners. So you're not supposed to mix these two. 
if the owners of a company transact to that company, we are going to record that uh, transaction differently uh, from the transaction that is affected by the company. Uh, let me make it clear that uh, you have uh, you have owners of a company, and you are also going to have you, you you have activities of the director, so owners of the company, and you're also going to have activities of the company in itself. So a company uh, has to be differently operating from the activities of the directors. It should be clear that way. So uh, if there is going to be uh, if there is going to be uh, uh, an activity that relate to the company, for example, uh, either it can be treated as drawings or otherwise, as we are going to see in future. And don't miss our next session. Thank you.